Welcome to Ross Flybox. Today we're going to tie something uh, a little bit different than what most of my videos are. Uh, I've never done a, a deer hair bug. Hopefully we'll have the time here and the video won't go too long. Um, I'm going to tie a diver that has uh, been in my box for quite a while. It's a, it's a standard in my box. It's simple to tie, it's nothing fancy. Uh, which is probably why I tied, since I, I don't do a lot of spinning. But let's go over how I do it. Uh, I start off with a size 6 uh, Gamakatsu stinger hook and 6 aught black thread. And work my thread to the back. Not a lot of moving parts to this. And the first material you're going to tie with is white bucktail. I take a, I would say probably a half a number two pencil size clump of hair. I don't try and stack it. I'm not exact with the size. But they all come out about the same. And what I'll do is I'll hand stack it. I'll grab my longest, pull them out, line them up, and I keep doing that until the majority of the hair is about even. If there's one hair that's too long or way too askew, I'll take it out. In the end, end up with a sizable chunk of a hair. Not perfectly even tips. And I, I measure it about twice the length of the hook. Uh, that's how long I want the tail. So I'll pinch there, trim off leaving about three-eighths of an inch, and that's my tie-in point. Wrap that three-eighths of an inch piece down. And get it into place. Next you're going to tie in a hackle. I've used Grizzly. I have a dark ginger, almost borderline Cree that I've been using this year. Um, it's a dark barred ginger. And I use the base feathers. What I'll do is I'll tie them in one at a time. I don't trim them. I measure them the same, the tips to, to bend out and be about the same length as the bucktail. Pinch it in place. And then do the other side. I flare them out. Get them about even. And wrap back to the initial tie in point. At that point, I clip the bases. And wrap over everything. Next, we're going to tie in the legs. I use centipede legs. I clip them off. They're usually banded in the middle. So, this is half a centipede leg, the way you buy it. To make sure I keep even with the sizes, I fold it in half and I make a small bite. And I'll tie in that bite on the near side. Get that loop close to the rear of the hook. 
and then I'll do the same thing this way I don't have to trim the, the, the legs I know exactly how big they are and they both match take about the same size bite I'll start this one on top roll it around where it's hanging correctly on the outside of the hackle and bind that down as well and what I do is I throw a whip finish in here a three turn whip finish and I add a small drop of super glue and to keep the super glue from getting on any of my tools as much as possible I'll take the stem or the, the end of the quill from one of my hackles and I'll, I'll even that out now bring my thread forward let that super glue dry for just a second. Normally I tie these up, I'll tie a half a dozen of them up to this point and I'll let the super glue dry. And then um, and then I'll come back one at a time and and do the bodies. Make sure everything lays right. Okay, the next material I'm gonna use is mule deer body hair. I started using mule deer body hair for the for my mice mouse patterns and uh, a lot of my irresistibles because uh, I like the way it flares doesn't have a lot of under fur I don't bother cleaning this hair I, uh, I stack it wrap it trim it and for the expediency of this we're not going to wait for that super glue to dry but I bring my thread back to about I leave about a sixteenth of an inch from the back of where the materials are tied in because I don't want to crowd the hackle if not the when you start packing your hair it'll tend to push back just a little bit and it'll fold fold back in on the legs and the first stack of hair I take I, I try and tie right about pencil size with the hair I'm not fancy with this like I said if you're looking for a tying class on spinning deer hair this is not the video this is going to be just how to tie this pattern uh, I start out with a, a sizable stack. The first one I keep on top. I flare it. Wrap it down. Go a couple wraps into it. And then making sure I don't shove it back onto the other materials. I pull it out of the way. I mainly keep it on top. and I get that in place. From this point I do the same thing working forward about the same amount of hair. Like I said I don't bother cleaning this. Mule deer hair is actually fairly clean compared to deer hair. I bring it to the front on top, wrap it once, wrap it twice, put it in place then I shove it back. I don't have a deer packer. I don't tie enough. This is one of the few patterns that I tie and keep in my box year round. And I keep working myself forward. For expediency I'm going to keep going so I have time to trim this. I don't want the video to last too long. wraps to spin it. The rest of the hair I allow it to spin around the full length of the hook. The 
first one by the tail with the fan. I try and keep on top only. And do another stack. Flare it. Give a couple quick wraps. And pack it. And wrap in front. Those of you who do a lot of hair are probably rolling over right now. But uh, I'm looking for the end result for this. I keep this all one color. This pattern, like I said, is very basic. It's a very effective pattern for me here. Probably get one more at the most. Sweep it back as good as you can. And I'll probably put about a half of a normal stack for this one. Get a little close. Sweep it back, get that last one. Wrapped off, and then we're gonna, gonna whip finish. I let it lay over my fingers, sweep it back as far as possible, get three or four wraps. We're gonna cement the crap out of that head. So that'll usually be enough. Okay. There's our spinning. Like I said, nothing fancy. I make sure it's even. Make sure nothing's caught. I'm going to try and trim this in the vise so you guys can see it better. First thing I'm going to do is trim the bottom. Make sure my legs and everything are out of the way. And trim the bottom fairly even. Get a good base. the strays and now what I do I start off first by facing it towards me and I square off the sides careful not to catch any I do this just so I have a guideline of width and then I'll come across the top and the back so I have a guide I'm not shaping, I'm not cutting it to, to length yet. And I come in from the side. And I make my first cut to the eye. I'm going to cut a V, just V shape the head. Basically getting the, the width in the back and the fact that I'm taking it all the way to the nose. And I come across the top. So I can get this on here, kind of come across the top. And then what I do, you see I'm starting to get the, the V right there. I come from behind 
and staying with the angle of the the base that I've started bring the scissors I catch the long fibers in the back and trim catch long fibers in the back I'm just moving the hair backwards you see how that's working catch a few more long fibers I sweep from the back a few more a few more and I keep going until I, I basically don't have any stragglers in the rear just catching those long ends And when I've got all the ends to where I believe see we're getting that pointy nose diver shape then I'll turn it over and I'll catch the long ones in the back and then I'll take my fingers and bring all those long fibers that aren't part of the collar up and I'll give the back of the head a little bit of shape and then the rest is eyeball I'll make sure I catch any obvious flyers shape the back of the head I'm not exact on this but they all come out relatively similar okay what I'm looking for is uh, that relative shape at this point I'll put it back in the vise upside down and I take Sally Henson's and I give a good coating on the bottom of Sally Henson's keeps the base the way I want it and then I shove that brush up in around the eye once that coating is done from the top down I can inspect a few flyers there we go clean the head center, head cement out of the eye and turn it over And there you go. The mule deer diver. Make sure I don't have anything caught. A very basic deer hair bug. Easy bug to learn and practice on. It's only one taper shape. So you don't have to worry about blending deer hair or anything like that. And this pattern crosses over to pretty much any species in warm water. The Mule Deer Diver. Hope it adds to your box. It's an unbelievable performer in mine. 
Good luck. See you on the water.